democracy in practice. Welcome to the program Democracy in Practice. Coming to you live on Liberty TV, Star Time, Channel 180. My name is Neka Luke. This is a program where we talk about good governance and the well-being of every Nigerian. Talking about good governance, talking about having the dividends of democracy. Now, if we talk about the dividends of democracy, I was surprised. I was one of those that were that um, got stuck when the news broke that some hoodlums went to vandalize a school, schools that are said to be commissioned in Dinomalaya's constituency in Kogi State. And I begin to wonder, the sad hoodlums, aren't they Nigerians? Don't they want to have what, they call, what we call the dividends of democracy? How do, how do you explain the fact that uh, certain constituencies are supposed to have development and some particular persons are saying no to it? We don't know if it's politically motivated. Of course, like someone said, yes, it, it is. But whatever the intentions are uh, that uh, make the said hoodlums to go to carry out that kind of uh, act. Such things it kills democracy and all that it entails. We don't have roads, we don't have schools, and yet um, this, these things are being put in place, and some youth are being brainwashed. Some youth are being used as political talks to destroy what we build with our money. I think we need to have a reorientation. I think we are deviating, we are drifting from the whole essence of democracy. Don't we like good things? You know, that's the question. You know, we, we cry all no schools for the young and then it is put in place, it is being renovated and all of a night and all of a sudden overnight, some person stand, uh, stood up and go and burnt it down for what only God knows the reason why. I think Nigerian youth need to have a rethink. If you are sent to do so, think twice and think about the effect of such things. This is just to condemn such acts and also to talk to us, the youth, if you're being asked, if you're being paid a million of naira to do such, take the money, but don't do that, because we need it. These men are big. They've gone through schools, but you and I still need it. Our children need it to get what, uh, what it takes for them to also become a leaders tomorrow. So let's say no to such crimes and say yes to having a peaceful, uh, a, a, a develop democracy where you and I would enjoy all that it, 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 it brings. And that's just to condemn the act because it's something very, very funny and annoying also. Away from that also, if we're still talking about democracy on this program, of course the election, they just concluded the election in the state has raised a lot of dust. And one of the dust it raised is the presence of military in that election. Not only a Kitty State, we've seen, we saw it in Anambra, we saw it in Edo and other states. And the question is what happens to the civil authorities? The police, can they do this job or are we saying that um, we need the military to have all this done properly? I was on the street. I spoke to a lot of Nigerians to fill their posts. I wanted to know how we feel during the election and we'll have the military. You go on the road, you see the military uh, marrying a, a main road. And I'm one of those persons that have walked on the street, on the major road, and I see the military men commanding traffic. It, it, it's funny, but I don't know um, why it's, it's so in Nigeria. Um, that's the question we're asking today. Uh, things like this, can the police do it? Not quite long, I saw we saw the protest here in Kaduna State, where when the police came out and it, it gave no, no effect until the military came, and I heard the sound of they are gone. It was different from what I heard the policemen, you know, shooting. When I heard that of the military, I knew something had, I knew the dance has changed. And at that point, the said protesters disappeared because they knew that if you, if you want fire, fire has come. But the question is, how long are we going to continue to tell this part? Is that the right part to tell? So many more we'll talk about on this program. We'll take a quick break when I come back. I'll play the report um, uh, of of the internet of the interaction I had with some Nigerians about military and then the police in Nigeria. And after that, we'll talk. Please do stay. Democracy in practice. with 
personnel, man election position, strategic election position, on election date. But I differ on the idea of bringing the military, who, who their role is already defined as territorial defenders. They shouldn't join in the issues in the, in the workings of civilians, in the issues and the dealings of civilians, not the military, but any other security apparatus, the police, the civil defense, and the like. Democracy does not actually uh, allow for such to happen because definitely the presence of military uh, voids the freeness of the election or whatsoever might happen within those uh, period. However, we must not jettison the fact that um, we live in a society, in Nigeria as it is today, anything can, can cause violence. And we also agree with me that our police is not well equipped physically, mentally, materially to curb several violence. Do you understand it now? That has actually taken place in our nation. You and I know that Nigerian police are more or less citizens wearing uniform. They are more or less, in fact, some courageous citizens that are not in uniform are better than some of our police officers. That is the truth. We all know that the military sometimes they are more effective than the police. The police I'm not saying the police are not effective, but, but sometimes there are some there are some level of violence that the police cannot handle. For them. You know, and that is why most times, in as much as we agree, absolutely that the military in an advanced society, in an advanced society, ought not to be present during election, during. Uh, civil uh, processes like that, but uh, we cannot actually waive the presence of military considering the, the, co the current uh, societal uh, situations. Democracy in practice. Um, the report you just listened uh, are the voices of some lawyers here in Nigeria speaking about um, the military, the police, and the civil, um, of course, uh, the other paramilitary organization in Nigeria and how they operate. The entire security architecture of Nigeria is faced with myriads of challenges due to the increased criminal activities and general insecurity that pose serious threats to the, uh, to the cooperation, to the corporate existence of the country. Now, these challenges and the incapacitation of the existing security outfits necessitated the conception and delivery of a child of necessity named Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in 2003 under President Ulusha Gunabasinjo. And the aim was to supplement the efforts of other security outfits. Now, here in Nigeria, each tier of government has specific agents and institutions in charge, of, in, in charge of control and administration of security for the citizens. Now, for instance, the army and its units are meant for the protection of the country from external attacks, while the police provide internal security and the maintenance of the law and order for the good of the populace. In recent times, it seems as if the police and the civil defense have lost its relevance and its role have been overtaken by the military. Now lately, the police who are meant to protect the lives and property of citizens appear to be the haunted as um, there is an increasing, as they are in increasing number murdered and attacked by robbers and, it, and its like. Now how did we get here? Where did we get it wrong? For you may be surprised that even during the election period, you see the military manning it. You know, we have the military there. Like I said earlier during our introductory remarks, that even on the main road, I have, main road, I have seen the military controlling traffic. And the question is, um, what is the role of the police? Can the job be done? Um, do we have to bring the military to do this job? Now, listening to 
the video we played before we came on air, uh, the people that were speaking said uh, the, the police uh, in Nigeria are not effective. They can't do it. The military uh, is what we need to, to do all this job. Well, I'm not alone here. My guest in the studio here, let's hear what he has to say. Major Mohammed Bashir Garma, retired MNI. He'll join us this evening to look at these issues and many more. Good to have you here, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ineka. You and this, your very qualitative radio and television house, you know, giving, you know, giving the general public good information and awareness. We're always glad to come when you invite us. And thank you very much for inviting me. Okay, thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Let's look at, uh, I just gave an illustration that all these things re, uh, came up again mm -hmm. when they just won the election mm -hmm. in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, what can you say? Let's begin with civil authority in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. What can you say about civil authority in Nigeria? Well, from the narrative, you've just finished reading, and uh, I think what we're seeing now it's not at all for people, you know, of our own ages. It's not at all new to us. Even in the past republic, there are some areas where we have serious problems. The military had to be called in. But the way those days they used to be called in is different from what is being done now. Now they are, all, they are, they are deployed. But those days, they were invited before they were deployed. But now it's direct deployment we have been seeing quite a long, for quite a long time. Um, I think what is happening here is not that the police is ineffective, as some people are thinking. It is just because I can say the police also is being misused. The police been misused. misdeployed. If the enough number, because according to the the, 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 the the information we had and which we read from some of the social media and newspapers, that about thirty thousand security men, police and army were deployed to Ekiti for that single election. For police ten thousand yes. Okay? So the question here is where did you get that strength of a number of police that from where did you withdraw them to carry them to that place? At least they didn't go for that two days or something like that. They must have been there to, to prepare the ground, to understand the ground before, you know, the, the actual election took place and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Now, the question we are going to ask ourselves is that, are we actually deploying the police for the, the very duty they are supposed to be doing Besides being not enough, the strength is required for the country. Understaff. Right? Yeah, understaff. Okay. But still, with the understaffing, they are still being misdeployed. If there's any word like that. Hmm. Because we used to hear how we, how we see, how you will see a number of you know, policemen following an elected politician or you know, escorting people, escorting, sorry to say, ladies who, who are from maybe wives to big, big, big men and so on and so forth. You know, continuously and so on and so forth. Yeah. Well, their statutory duty what to be this in is to do, to, to do what, somebody would just tell me, okay, if she's escorting a big man or if she's escorting a big man's wife, she, they are still doing the duty of protection at like this. In. But one policeman is supposed to be for 400 people. Wow. That is the United Nations standard. Uh, standard. Yeah. So why should one man, eh? Why should one man be having about fifteen policemen, one fifty policemen, twenty policemen, and so on and so forth? Let me give you, uh, let me tell you something. What people, maybe some people know what that they don't know. There is an African country recently. Their minister of interior, that is Kenya, he came in. He withdrew all the policemen attached to the BIBs, to the governors. You see, each governor. One policeman, one orderly only, mm. and all elected officers who are supposed to be have this that used to have about ten policemen and so on, one one each. They complain, complain, complain. They were withdrawn, and they were deployed quickly to places where they are, they are, they are, they are much more mm. more required. If we talk about in, that in Nigeria, oh, um, of course, 
everyone will be quick to tell you that what we have this massive uh, deployment is the governors uh, and, and their families. Of course, this is not quite long, a governor revealed um, the, um, the figure of policemen attached to him alone, and it was alarming. So yes. Wow, yes. Over 200 to one governor? Yes. What are we talking you, about? You, you know, what they do is this. It's, let me tell you one thing. The economic situation, the administration even of the running of these organizations, they are so faulty that as if you see any, all of them, they are just trying to go and find a, a comfortable place. Immediately somebody is appointed, you know, you see somebody running from, you know, who is the place I want to be with you. This is the, the, you know, so that by the end of the day, when you come back to the barracks, those who are doing the legitimate, when I say legitimate, that the duty they're supposed to be doing most, you will see them looking impoverished, looking haggard. Why these ones follow this thing? They receive the best things, you know, or, you know, or, 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 that uh, uh, anybody is uh, this thing. Okay. So okay. why I bring this thing is, you said, why are the military? The military, when you see them there, they are supposed, they are supposed to be supplementing. You understand me? But I bet to tell you that deployment in Ekiti, I bet to tell you, I don't think, you know, the, 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 the Mr. President must have been hoodwinked or he must be coerced to have allowed that thing to have taken place. Okay, let or me come could here. Be. Let me come here, sir. Yes. If, you, if you're saying that the military, that the army uh, were, were sent to supplement, now the question would be, can't the police do this job on its own? Mm -hmm. We know that um, election is called a civil mm -hmm. affair. Do we need the military? Uh, the fact that we also have the civil defense, mm -hmm. okay, not just the police. Mm -hmm. Can't this be done? If you're saying Ikiti will have a large number, recollect that in Anambra we had, I think, 60,000. Yes, yes. In Eka, do you know the reason so, why? Because those were single elections. When it comes to the general election, where all, most, all the 29 states or 30 states will be doing with the presidential election, you, no state is going to have the look, uh, luxury of being such a, a number so of why do we have it happen in single state why do we have because that massive because that that was you know that is the an election whose you know everybody's eyes is on and then if you look at it in that anambra if you know what happened before the election mm -hmm. they were saying the governor and you know anywhere there is seen if there is a report a threat that, that that may likely conflagrate the place mm -hmm. naturally you have to show force is it now that, now, for what you're saying, the police cannot do this job. The police, the civil defense, you know, civil authorities in Nigeria cannot do this job. Let me tell you, people believe that when you deploy the military, they are, the military are there to, to just shoot and, and finish everybody. No. There is something the, the, the police, armed forces, everybody they used to do, they call it show of power. Just the presence alone. And let me tell you one thing. When they say 30,000 service personnel, Security soldiers and this. When I had it, well, my you know no, maybe you, because you, of my you, experience. You include the, the army and mm -hmm. what have you becomes forty thousand. Okay, but let me tell you when I had it with my experience, I just say look, this is a psychological this is, because where did you get this force? With people, it was soldiers who are even trying to you know getting soldiers to cover so many places, so many you know f f places flying over and so on and so forth. Where did you get all this is to deploy, uh, you know, to, to, this, to, to that place? But if you sound like that, people who are wanting to cause trouble will just have a double think. And I think, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not a privy to it, I think that may be part of the, this thing we're saying. But the truth will come when the real time for the real election comes. Let's see if that type of luxury or like that no, type of... We, we, we also had a 2015 uh, election, and like you rightly said, mm -hmm. no state has the, uh, the, the luxury of having like 16,000 mm -hmm. or 30,000 mm -hmm. policemen. But again, the question here is, if we have a civil, a civil authority that is capable, mm -hmm. that has all it takes to run election, mm -hmm. do we need to deploy the military? Like some agents have said, oh, that it's obvious that the police, are, um, like one said particular that. Nigerians don't even regard the police. They, they see the police as common people. But when they see the army, and the army, they are told because you, you, they know that they are not Yes, you know the reason why people are thinking like that of the police? Because they are, the police, they are nearer to the people more, more than the, the soldiers. But from the ongoings, if we don't take time, 
the soldiers too are very have become very very much close to, closer to the general board and that this is what we don't like it is not at all a good sign so what i think you know we should do in this country is to quickly try and shore up you know this shortage of personnel we are always saying of the police and so on and so forth and mark you from all indication with the way divisions are being created battalions brigades there and so on and mm. so forth even the 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 air forces even the military the soldiers the the air force and so on and so forth they need to be more more you know uh, uh, recruited and uh, ex expanded so that they can just be able to to shore up all the shortages and so on and so forth okay. but uh, and again this um, the deployment of uh, military we are not saying that military let people know that the police if they feel that they cannot do anything about things, they can call on the military to help them. But, and mark you, I want people again to know, the military, they are, they are always called when it, when it is necessary to come and help the civil authority, especially maybe in the matters of election, census, for example, like when you are going to should this be so okay let me come in mm. let's, let's leave election i think we'll, mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've dwelled there for some time yes. now now even protests like i said here in kaduna mm -hmm. few weeks ago we had protests in kaduna mm. where the police came out to control mm. and all of a sudden the police couldn't do it. and then we saw the military when they came in i was in my house but when i yeah. heard the gunshot i said no this, this this is not the police yes. this is definitely the military yes and it took the military a presence in, in, in few seconds the protest dispersed the question is mm. do we have a strengthened civil authority in nigeria that will play their role because if we will invite the military in something minor as protests in something as roadblocks i don't know if if that's why you're an expert if we should also have the military on our road with road uh, to, uh, to have roadblocks like i said I've, I've also seen situations several times where the military are also invited. I've been on the road and I see the military trying to uh, to control the traffic. I've seen several. They are there. all they are all in order, well, but they should be done according to the to the norms and according to the law. Let me tell you one thing. But the way you are seeing it and everybody is seeing it now, it, you know, it's just very haphazard. Do you know the reason why you always see quickly after the police have withdrawn, you see the military because nowadays you always find them doing conjoined, you know, operation patrol. You see operation something with soldiers, with police, with civil defense in one vehicle and the other and so on and so forth. This is, those days what happened is, you know, is, you know, when the police find that it cannot control this rampaging whosoever they are, whatever group, what they do is they quickly call on the authorities. The law, if it is a place where there is a magistrate or a judge, the judge must be there, the chief administrator or the district officer or resident must be there Press men must be there to record what is happening. Even even something like I said, protests. So yes. Only the military to come in and protest. Before that one is done. So what is the role the of the police? If if actually we also have the military mm -hmm. come to um, uh, control or say this protest should not hold. So we also need the military. So what is the role of the police? It is the police that will tell the you know that will say protests should not take place. If the people insisted that they are going to protest. Then when the police seem that it is going to be overwhelmed, it will tell the authorities, look, we are going to be overwhelmed because of the, the, the strength of these people, because of the type of weapons, whether they are crude weapons, whether they are cordials, whether they are guns, whatever. Mm -hmm. Look, we want help. The next help that you are going to look for is from the military, is from the army. Now, are the Nigerian police well equipped? Civil authorities are they well strengthened? To do what? So to do things like this, to carry out the roles, things like this protest, like that protest in Kaduna here. People who saw it said, "Oh, that these men weren't even armed." Le thank you very that much. The protesters were, were even armed. Thank you. Yeah, the police failed or were, couldn't control that until they had help you from see, the military. You see, in Nika, we either do the correct thing. And then let people understand and be aware that the law and order of the country must be protected and must be kept. Then don't even get in yourself involved in this because in the present situation, the way things are, even the policemen, they are afraid of doing what they are supposed to be doing because of being chided from, you know, from, from the above. You know, when I say from the higher you know, authorities and so on and so forth, 
mark you, this is a democratic system whereby if anything happens, by the end of the day, a scapegoat will be gotten. And that one scapegoat is, it, 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 scapegoat is gotten, it, it, you know, is going to, 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 to this, this. So you see, that's why some people, you see them, like the policemen are talking, when they see things like this, you know, they look uh, adamant, or they look, uh, look warm attitude like, as such, because, you know, they don't even know what is happening do this type of, uh, you know, dispensation whereby they can be called and be rebuked for even doing some one thing or the other. You get me? Talking about human rights, have you not been charged with human rights? Or quickly, quickly, you will see that. Let me tell you, you said, so because you said you don't... That, uh, pull out for the army to, to carry out the human rights. And that's why they are, they, are, they, are, they are saying that the army has been, you know, is, has been breaking the, uh, what, what do you call it, human rights, something, 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 because they are, they are always being called to come and do this type of thing. And the one they want to do it, they, 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 they I've told you, there's rules and regulation of this. It's not bad. It's correct. One police said, we cannot do it. Call the military. But you know when the, what the, when the military comes, what, 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 what they do. So, People should be orientated and be told about things like this. And then the media also, we have to help this, you know, service personnel. We're not saying that let them with impunity to start doing all sorts of things. But look, we have to look at it again at a certain angle. Than you to have so many hundreds of people being maimed or killed. And this, you, you know, the law is that we can shoot somebody's uh, leg and 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 and, and this in and, and scare you know so that people can be scared. But the group, the type of protesters we have nowadays, you know, they are so hardened that even the police, you know. Cannot. So you're saying the fear of the police and the civil um, or defense not to commit violate human rights um, is is part of, is part is of one it. is is the reason why yes. they get the military involved in things that are in roles that are meant to be not that they out give, by the police. Not that they give. They are reluctant to do so many things. And when they are reluctant to do so many things, the result will not be gotten, then the military would have to be called in. Could this have been the reason why we now have um, increased uh, death rate of the police? Because Nigerians are beginning to uh, express worry. Now, if the police that are, are set aside to protect the lives and mm. property of the of Nigerians, mm. and I'm being the ones hunted. Okay, let me. Where is our safety? Now let me give. Like, me, let me tell you the reason for that. Let me tell you the reason for that. You know, for quite a long time we have been complaining since the overthrow of Gaddafi. Weapons have infiltrated into Nigeria with Boko Haram weapons. There are weapons coming into the country and so on and so forth. I think remotely there was there has been an effort maybe by the authorities. To, 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 to get to the head of this thing, and then the, the, there is a great number of reduction, a reduction of coming of these illegal weapons into the country. So the only way these criminals will look for weapons, which they have been doing before, is to attack such places whereby they feel, because they know, for so many reasons, the people holding these rifles in so many places, sometimes they are very complacent, and then they, they take them by surprise. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you if things are being done as they should have been, where you have a group of soldiers, where you have a group of policemen armed, and so on and so forth, there, is, there should always be an arranged feeding system. When I say feeding, the food, they are going to, how, they are, how they are going to eat themselves. When somebody is going, you leave there. But when you... You know, you, you you just put them there. Maybe you just that is when you pay them. Maybe a little bit. Isn't Go that ahead. coming back to the question I asked you? Mm -hmm. Are police, civil defense, um, are they well trained? Are they well equipped to it's try the task? Because you're just saying training and should... equipping. Training and equipping are different. They are different. Let me use general terms: strengthening mm -hmm. to strengthen them. Mm -hmm. If you strengthen them, it could be via knowledge training. Mm. If you equip them, you also strengthen them. That's that's the question I ask. Okay. Because now that it's obvious they have been free uh, to the eyes of uh, these robbers and what have you. Mm -hmm. They're looking for weapons. Look at the ones we saw in, in, in White and, and Abuja. No, Abuja, where yes. they weren't just killed, you know, and even the last one we saw, seven. Mm -hmm. And they even the one who also had the news, not just killed, but burnt. Yeah. You know, and these are the issues we're saying. If, if we now have this place being the prey, being now the haunted, mm. where is our security? Now, so we're not, and that's, that's why I threw the question. Mm. 
are our civil authorities well equipped, well strengthened, given all the takes, both the knowledge wise, both all the need to stand firm to do their job? The training, I'm not going to put training because if you said training, those seven people, in what way did they fail in their training to do this? Maybe, let me tell you something. Mm. There may be an administrative lapse as far as they are there. Such as? Such as no, uh, uh, no provision for, 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 for feeding where they can just get themselves fed without leaving that place of duty to go to somewhere. A provision of you know, toilet, toilet area where they can ease themselves and so on default with, with, without going to anywhere. How they are, they are even arranged to, 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 to say themselves, you will be on stand, stand you know, stand to, mm. and you will be standing down. You know, when we say stand to, these are the people, let's say if it is four people, two people are stand to, they are watching for the others. Sleep something, because, and they cannot just get themselves, they are not supposed to get themselves in one place, just yeah, a bunch like this. Because of this type of thing. So it's not a sign that there is lapses somewhere. The, the lapse is administrative. You know, when you, it depends on where they are deployed. So what needs to be done? What needs to be done is to when things like this happen, which we expect, I'm sure, must have taken place, there should be board of inquiry. And then when the, when the result of the board of inquiry should be strictly followed, if real, and it should be by the expert. And Mark, you, let me tell you one thing. What we don't understand, what we fail to understand in this, there are so many of these type of people who are working in these type of places before. Just because of one thing or the other, they are dismissed and they are not, their records are not well kept. They are very bitter. They know so much about these things. They know so this. Let me tell you, let me give you an example. Take a ride on the road where we have our security men placed on the road because of this Abuja kidnapping yeah. and so forth. When you pass their places, Sometimes you will find that actually these people, there is something, you know, that needs to be seen. So constant visitation by their seniors, not just depending on telephone contact with them, constant visitation to ask, even to, take, to check the, 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 the what, do you, what do you call it, the, the, the workability of the, the vehicles, the workability of the weapons they are having. They're having... In the morning, during rainy season, you know, batteries run down. Mm. And when you park a vehicle in one place, especially, you know, with that type of, with the type of the rainy season and so on and so forth, you need to test this vehicle. Like this. Make sure all these things are working. One day somebody can start from Abuja, go to Kaduna, come back. Okay, and let me try this question. So it's Has the Nigerian police be treated with a, a kid gloves while the Nigerian army are giving all the attention they need to deliver? Some have said... Give Nigerian police a little or a quarter or half of what to give to Nigerian army, they will do their job excellently. So, you see the problem here? I want people to understand. The setup is totally different. The equipment the police use is not the same the equipment. Not the equipment per se. Listen to me. The support. You, support in what way? All that they need, because oftentimes we've heard people narrating, oh, there are, there are a case of robbery and then the police are called, they say, oh, their, their, their car doesn't have fuel. This is what I'm trying so, to say. That's what was saying. But has that ever been, have that kind of story be heard with the army? So, let, is, then who, whose problem is that? That's a question. Is the problem of the administration within that organization you're talking of? So, invariably, you're saying, perhaps, that Nigerian army has, has a, a been given... The, all the attention they need. Then who, 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 who has given them that? Uh, I should ask you that question. The organization, the, the Nigerian army has given them the, the authorities of the Nigerian army is, should give the Nigerian army attention. The authorities of the Nigerian police should give the Nigerian police attention. Okay, the I'll, authorities, it's not somebody who, is, who will come from somewhere and start doing your job for you. When I say administratively, I know what I'm saying. If I am today an, a police officer, in charge of you know of of, of 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 transport transport division i will ask for a request every week or twice in, in a week and I, I will visit all these vehicles in the bush to see their situation okay so let me hold it i think um, it's time to hear nigerians react to this we'll be looking at the civil authorities in nigeria the police the civil defense of course and every other person who needs to be part of maintaining peace and order in the country vis-a-vis -vis the military like a lot of Nigerians are saying the military is now taking over the role of the police civil threat in Nigeria. The numbers are on your screen. So just look at the numbers and dial. We'll pick your calls 
as they come up. Meanwhile, let's take a, a very quick short break. We'll be right back. Democracy in practice. Democracy in practice. Welcome back from that break. It's now our call time. Let's feel your pulse. Let's hear what you have to say as we continue to look at the civil authority in Nigeria vis a vis the military. Asking um, is the military now taking over the role of civil authority in Nigeria? I did ask a question before I. I I came back to the call the calls and I said, um, what is happening? The military is getting all that it needs to deliver. And it seems as if the police are being neglected, like some Nigerians have argued. But my case is saying no. If the military has all it takes, it's because authorities that handles them is giving them the need for. The question should go to the police and, and of course the civil defense. Um, what their leaders and of course their heads are doing with um, funds. That are meant to be released to make them work effectively. The numbers are on your screen, but the numbers will pick them and have. Okay, I've lost this call. Please, while you wait for the numbers again, for those that have numbers, you can call in. Hello, good evening. We are connected. Good evening. Yes, what's your name and where are you calling us from? From Sokoto. Though I didn't get your name, please do go ahead, sir. You must, if you want a proper condition, you must provide them with all the necessary equipment, especially in terms of data. You put a police or a feather in a bush. You, you let him with nobody far away from his family, and you are there, maybe enjoy yourself to get care of your lives and others. And therefore, you let him with nothing. Like food, water, or whatever you I think the best thing is given an actual proper equipment. All right, then. Very good guns and other transport. Thank you so much. I think I get your yeah. point. Thank you so much. Let's pick other calls. Hello, good evening. We are connected. Good evening. Okay, sorry, I lost that call. If you're calling, all you need to do is to turn down the volume of your TV set and we'll talk on the phone. That way, we'll communicate effectively. Hello, good evening. Hello, good evening. Yes, but you sound faint. Welcome to the program this evening. What's your name? We're connected. Good evening. Yes, I can hear you. Good evening. I didn't get your name. I'm the audible, please. What's your name? My name is Oluwa Shegun. Oluwa calling from where? Please go ahead, Oluwa Shegun. I hope I can hear you. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. I heard it. Go ahead. Yeah. 
All right then. Thank you so much. I get your point. You're saying his his omission is is in conformity with what the girls in the studio have said. Hello. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good evening. Let's meet you. What's your name? Yes, I'm okay. Go ahead. You see, it is better you be to the police and the army. The paper it is better they don't be arrested. So much you say no to what he just said mm -hmm. what's what's what you know about well let me tell you one thing you see there are categories of uh, people armed forces category of people you know when i see people officers kada and then general ranks kada mm -hmm. you know me? officers as i know in the police and the army we buy our we bought our uniforms or we buy our uniforms boots everything you see us wearing we pay taxes like any other government officers and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But the, the general ranks, you understand me? There is, in every year's budget, there is supposed to be money for the issuance of uniforms, boots, even polish, battery, touch lights, you know, all sorts of things that are okay. supposed to go to, to them, you know, for their duties and so on and so forth. But you know how things changed. When I was talking last time, I talk, I, you know, when we had a discussion, I talk about central feeding administratively. Those days, it is a must. When you have gas placed in a place, you go with a beku, you have a central feeding, you know, cookhouse where you carry food, you feed them there, yeah. with, so that they will not leave their guard duty place to go and start looking for food, food okay. or to go and look for anything. And so, so these are the things. But now I, 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 I've been made to understand things have totally changed. Because these chaps, they have not been made, and nobody wants to look tattered. Because this uniform, you have, if you look neat in neat, you know, you look more authoritative. Um, yeah, so that's why you see these poor chaps, you know, they go about buying these things. But they are supposed to be, honestly, as far as I'm concerned, they're Okay, let me pick doing. this call. Perhaps you may be a last caller. Hello, good evening. Oh, there was a call. Sorry, please do call back again. I really wanted to speak with you. Hello, good evening. Good evening. You may be our last caller. Good evening. Hello. Let's hear you. Good evening. Welcome to this program this day. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You've not turned on the volume of your TV set. Hello. When you call in, all you need to do is to reduce the volume of your TV set and let's talk on the phone. That way we'll talk effectively. Hello. Good evening. Okay, I have to let you go it over with the calls. Um, but like I said, always reduce the volume of your TV mm. set. Mm. Your last lines, how do we begin to strengthen not just the police, mm. but our civil authorities so that they can stand up to their duty? Briefly? The administration. Check, check, do you know, like this, this chap, the, the allergy that called from Sokoto, yeah. I'm sure he must be an insider and so on. Look, everything that is due to these people, please try and give to them. Train them more, not only just when you give them the initial training from, from, the, from the colleges, you know, you just leave them alone. There should be a continuous training as they are grading, proficiency is growing higher and so on and so forth. That's the federal government or the leadership because like Nigerians are appointing hands on the federal The leadership government. is under who? It's under the federal, federal government. government. Okay. So this is it. They are the ones to arrange their things as according to how they need okay, it. Okay, perhaps you're going back to yeah. the some, some sort of from someone here that said that their police have been neglected. Not, okay, our time is up. Thank you so I'm much sure. for our topic for general study on this program. My guest has been Major uh, Mohammed Bashirgama. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much indeed. My name is Naka Luke. That's the package of our program today. Join us again on Tuesday. Bye for now. Democracy in practice.